Sellers, I think you're in for some rough seas coming up here, and I'm going to tell you why, even on the heels of the good news that we got last week. So let's start with the good news, and uh, we'll go from there. So last week, U.S. job growth cools in October to 150,000 while unemployment rises. Why is this good news? Well, because this news affected mortgage rates and brought mortgage rates down quite significantly compared to what we've been seeing. So employers added 150,000 jobs, and that was less than what they expected, that 180,000. And also unemployment ticked up to 3.9%. And this is what we've wanted to see in the economy with all of the action the Fed has been taking They've been trying to slow things down, trying to soften the employment landscape, and it's just been so resilient. And finally, we have seen their impact hit the labor market, or so we think at this point, right? And this affected mortgage rates. We actually saw a huge drop. They were hitting 8%, and now they're closer to the 7.5% range, which is the biggest drop we've seen in a long time. Last week, mortgages uh, follow the treasury yields, and that was down sharply last week. The Fed also decided not to increase the interest rate. They sounded less hawkish at their meeting last week. And then we also got that jobs data, and all of those things together made some moves in mortgage rates. Look at this beautiful graph here showing where they were at and where they're at now. Um, and so it was actually a 67 uh, basis point um, drop uh, from a 2023 high of 8.03%. So it is good news for both buyers and sellers. We start to see more traffic out there when uh, buyers are uh, have an option to get a house at a rate that's a little bit more palatable. And for buyers, obviously, it, you have more ability and purchasing power when rates go down. But I am not convinced that 7.5% is what we need to bring the buyers back. And we're seeing some pretty stormy signs in the uh, in the market for sellers. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Uh, first, if you're getting any value out of this, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. We'd love for you to be part of this community going forward. Now, the Cromford Market Index, if you're new here, this is something that I follow. I'm a subscriber to the Cromford Report, and uh, the Market Index is basically a leading indicator showing us where the market is likely to go. And they look at supply and demand factors in the market to tell us this and kind of prices end up following uh, where this goes eventually. So um, this is just going down um, and it's going down pretty quickly. I've been talking about this week after week. Uh, where we're standing today, this says 118. Uh, you'll see on the dials here, it shows 117 close enough. Um, but I want to show you just this downward trend and how quickly things are accelerating. And uh, although the news of mortgage rates is, is brand new and it's not going to reflect on here yet, I just don't know that that is going to turn this in a different direction or even stall it from going down further because we're getting into such a slow season with the holidays. At this point, you know, it it's just not really rainbows and butterflies for sellers in general, even in a hot market. Things just slow down quite a bit because people get distracted. And unless you really need to be out buying a home, you're shopping for your Christmas presents instead. So this is what's going on with the CMI. Um, if you're new, the way to read this, anywhere between 90 to 110 is considered a balanced market and anything above 110 is a seller's market. So at 117.7, we are certainly in a seller's market, but we are hanging on by just a thread. This has been going down very quickly. Same thing applies with demand and supply. So um, 100 is kind of that balanced range. So 70.7 means that our demand is 30% below normal, and 60 in supply means that our supply is 40% below normal. And if you've been following this, we're seeing supply rise pretty quickly. Demand has been kind of holding stable, but going down very slowly. Um, but these two numbers are getting closer and closer together, which will put us into a balanced market. So I have no doubt that by next week when I'm talking about this, we will be in a balanced market. I just don't see this number hanging above 110 much longer. Now, what happens from there? You only have that range of 90 to 110, calling that a balanced market before you go below 90 and you're in a, a buyer's market. And 
I really think that's where we're headed right now because of the slow season we're getting into in addition to where we're at with mortgage rates, the economy, and just the overall sentiment in the housing market, not to mention affordability. So sellers, I think you might be in for a stormy season right now, at least the next three to four months. Now, I'm not saying that this is a crash and I'm not saying this is going to be forever and ever, but as far as I can see for the next three to four months, just hang tight, weather through the storm. If you don't have to sell your house quickly and you don't have to sell it right now, then I would just stay strong, but expect to get less traffic, maybe an offer not as quickly as you expected. And when you do get an offer, it might be a low ball one. But for buyers, the good news is you can beat down some of those sellers if you really want to. If they do need to sell by the end of the year, or you know, maybe they have just kind of lost hope for the fact that the market is going to trend in their favor in the future or near future, you may have more of an opportunity during this time when things Things are slower. So whether you're a buyer or a seller, those are some things to consider. Now let's look at what's going on with each city. Uh, this is the CMI for each city. We've seen an overall decline month over month of 15.8%. Uh, Last week it was 14.5%. So another acceleration uh, month over month of this change. Some of the cities that are seeing the biggest declines, we've got Cave Creek, Buckeye, Mesa, Scottsdale, Paradise Valley, Chandler, Peoria, Surprise, and Phoenix all falling at faster rates. And we do have a few cities already in buyer's markets like Buckeye and Queen Creek. Those are in a buyer's market for sure. Uh, they are not only under 90, but they're under 80. We've got Goodyear and Maricopa. Those are also in a buyer's market. And then Surprise Peoria, balanced markets. Everything else is considered a seller's market, but we are moving fast to balance. Uh, and in my prediction, likely into a buyer's market as well. So I'm not fully convinced that 7.5% is going to change the game here, at least for resale. Now, what we're seeing in new construction is a whole different thing. We've actually seen new construction be pretty strong. And I will tell you, I was just at new construction this past weekend, and they are offering some pretty big incentives for buyers, like uh, close to $30,000 in closing costs, um, incentives specifically to buy down your rate or um, or you, know, you can also use it for upgrades and that kind of thing. But new homes are really uh, able to play in this space with these high rates. And so that's another disadvantage you have as a seller out there. Uh, you just have a lot of traffic going to new homes over resale homes because if they can get a rate buy down, they might be more interested in that if they can get a more affordable payment for a similar home price and it's new. So, you know, Weather the storm, weather the storm, sellers. We're we're gonna get through it. Now let's look at this. This is I, you know, this is just from a um, word document, but I copied this from the Cromford report just to show what's going on. So um, month over month and year over year, closed transactions down eight percent from last October, down six percent from September. Then they split these up into new homes versus resale. So for new home closed sales, it's actually up five percent from last October, but down nine percent from. The this September. For resale homes, our numbers are down 12% from last October and down 5% from September. So, uh, and this is number of transactions, but you can see resale is hurting more than new homes because at least for new homes, uh, the closed numbers were up year over year, uh, but um, not for resale. Now, the overall median sales price uh, is unchanged from last year. So all of this hasn't impacted prices yet. Uh, and up 4.4% from September. If you break this into a uh, new versus resale, we've got resale sales price down 0.6% from last October and up 1.1% from September. For new homes, uh, up 1.8% from last year and up 12% from September. For new homes, that's a pretty big jump when you look at the number or the sales price from uh 
September to October, and that just might be the mix of sales that were done in that month. But regardless, keep that in mind, sellers, you are not only competing against the interest rate, but you're also competing against new construction that is able to offer a lot to buyers right now. So batten down the hatches, weather the storm sellers. I think the next three, maybe four months are going to be tough. I don't know if we're going to see any relief after that. A lot of it's going to depend on rates and demand, but typically this time of year is already slow. And then we're fighting against these rates and competing against new construction. So keep the faith sellers. You can do it. And buyers, go out there and take advantage if you can. So if you want to know more about what's going on with a balanced market, what that looks like, check out this video right here. And I'm going to be back later this week with another video. Thanks for watching.